This video is about why you should try going vegan or plant-based on your next backpacking trip. And I, this is not a video on why you should do it with your entire life. This is just strictly for backpacking. Um, before I went plant-based in my regular life, I had already gone plant-based when I go backpacking. I didn't call it plant-based, I didn't call it vegan, I didn't even really know I was doing it. I was just doing it because of five simple reasons. And the first reason why I think you should consider going is because cleanup is so easy. I know that's a lazy thing, but come on. R Literally, the only thing you have to do after you eat a vegan or a plant-based meal, now I'm also talking about oil-free. So if you bring oil, that's a whole nother story. But if you go oil-free, plant-based, vegan um, meals while you're backpacking, literally all you do is you put a little bit of water in your bowl, or I cold soak things, so I have a jar, put a little bit of water in my jar, shake it up, drink it, it's cleaned. Maybe a little bit more water, but that's it. So the first reason is because it's so easy to clean. Um, the second reason is because it's light. You can basically uh, assume that you could very easily do a half pound per thousand calories. Now, that's without trying also. So whenever I make my meals, and if you've seen any of the meals on this channel, I don't purposely try to make them light. Um, it just always ends up being that that's the approximate weight. Um, very rarely is it more than that, it's usually below. And all the time after a video, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, okay, what could I do to make that lighter um, the next time? And so basically you can kind of assume that it's about a half a pound for a thousand calories. The other thing that it's good for is it's very easy to match your style of backpacking. So if you are a cold soaker, this fits in perfect with cold soaking. There are plenty of cold soaking vegan meals. This channel happens to be full of them because that's the only thing that I do. Um, the second thing is it fits very nicely into a meal plan where let's say you're the sort of person who likes to wake up, have breakfast, and then sit down, have lunch, sit down, have dinner. Or you're the sort of person that likes to snack throughout the entire day. It fits very ne neatly into that sort of, uh, any, any type of meal plan that you already make. Whoa, sorry, some ice fell behind me and I thought some animal was coming up behind me. Um, the next thing is that it is, now this is, I'm gonna tread carefully here. I'm gonna tread very carefully with this um, fifth point. I think I'm on the fifth point here. And that is, it's nutritious. But here's where I want to go with this. When you're backpacking, and if you watch a lot of videos out there on backpacking meals, they're always going to mention calories, calories, calories. Um, sometimes they'll mention protein and other things. And I know that absolutely I have mentioned that because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear that you can do 4,000 calories and this many grams of protein and this many grams of fat. The other reason, though, you should be looking at your, the type of food that you bring is for recovery purposes. Because, you know, it's kind of like if you own a car, you don't just worry about putting gas in it, right? Like you just don't gas, 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 gas. Eventually the parts wear out when you're not changing the oil, when you haven't, you know, um, flushed the coolant, when you, you know, and, and other things like that. And so one of the problems with a lot of backpacking meals out there is that they're only focused on the fuel. They're not focused on giving you what you need to recover. And you know, the whole protein thing, don't get me started. When you're out backpacking, you're not, you're not concerned about ingesting all of this protein so you can bulk up. You're concerned about your muscles recovering. You're concerned about just having enough protein for your muscles to rebuild, not build into, you're not becoming a bodybuilder while you're out there. And with all the other things that are in vegan meals, they allow your body to recover faster and quicker and you just simply feel better, uh, whether it's the next day when you start or it's three days later. And so that's the other reason, uh, it's a big reason for me that really got me hooked. And it wasn't noticing that in backpacking, it was just noticing that um, just in life, how it just seemed to have more energy and recover quicker. Um, the other thing is that I've, with, with the vegan meals, I find myself not having energy swings. Um, I find a lot of times, like I was watching a video of somebody, um, 
I think it was last, two nights ago. And, you know, they took out these treats that they had and as part of their meal plan. And the first thing I thought of is, wow, you, you eat those, your body's going to be crashing in a couple of hours. So you kind of have a choice. You can kind of constantly feed that junk into you or you could eat things that aren't going to cause you to, you know, spike and then come down and spike and then come down. Um, and I wonder too, like if I'm watching a lot of the, you know, these backpacking channels of people who are, are videoing their trips, if you can almost predict when, you know, they're like, oh, I'm feeling kind of tired or, oh, I'm kind of low on energy, you know, based on what time of day it is and based on what they've been eating in the day. So I find that the vegan meal plan for me kind of keeps my energy balanced. Um, and the other thing, you ready for this one here? I think this is number six. This is the bonus one. And this is a good one for you ultralight backpackers. If you are going to... I'm questioning what I can hear an airplane coming really low. I'm questioning whether to keep going or to stop. I think I'm going to stop. It's going to come right over me. I'll be back in a second. All right, the plane has passed. Um, another reason to go vegan and plant based while you are backpacking, and this one's a little weird, is you can ditch your toothbrush. So if you're one of those ultra lightweight people, it's the perfect thing because, hey, you get to lose another ounce or a half an ounce or a quarter of an ounce, depending on what kind of toothbrush setup that you have. Um, if you ditch in those sugary snack foods, you're ditching the gummy bears and the Twizzlers and you're ditching the, the sweetened granola, uh, sweetened oatmeal coming out of the packet, you got none of that stuff that's coating your teeth. You got nothing to worry about having to brush away. Um, you know, it, it just... Your, your teeth just feel cleaner. Um, I have gone an entire weekend and just, just, you don't even notice anything. Uh, you, you know, like sometimes I can remember in the you know, old days going backpacking and if I didn't bring a toothbrush, I'd come home and you can kind of feel like your teeth are all that kind of gritty and you got to brush it off. Or, you know, even if you eat a lot of candy and sweet stuff, you kind of get all that grit on your, whatever that forms on your teeth. If you're going plant-based and vegan, you just, it just doesn't happen. Um, I went and got a dental cleaning a couple months ago, and the lady was like, wow, you're doing such a great job. What are you doing? And I'm like, nothing. Uh, just living my life. And so it really makes a huge difference. No sugar, no cavities sort of thing. You know, refined sugars. So uh, this was just a simple video. Um, I was just out and about filming something else and I figured, hey, why not rattle this one off? If you have a reason why you should go vegan while backpacking, please leave it in the comments. And again, not a video about going vegan for your whole life. Just give it a shot one weekend for a backpacking trip. Thanks.